Hey folks, thanks very much for clicking on this video. Mike here from TA Outdoors. I'm in the woods. It is back end of December at the moment. We've just had Christmas. Hope you all had a lovely Christmas. New Year is coming up and I thought I'd get out here in the woods on what is possibly one of the best days I've ever been out. This is the, I came here earlier today about lunchtime and there was just a mist covering across all the trees, all the bushes. It was really eerie, but it was really pretty at the same time. I've set my tarp up. I've got a, a kind of tarp shelter. It's a plow point or an adaption of the plow point shelter. I've just got the fire going. The ground is really, really wet. Being England, we've had a lot of rain and this is our pretty much rainy season right now. So the wood is very damp. It's, it kind of struggled to get going, really, the fire. <clears throat> but it's okay. We've got wood on there. The fire's going. Got myself a nice coffee in my cooksa. And uh, yeah, just enjoying time out here in the woods. That's what it's about. I'm really looking forward to this overnighter. I've got some grub with me, some food. Nothing extravagant, nice simple camp food. I'll show you around the shelter in a minute. And then yeah, we're just gonna kick back, relax, and enjoy this peaceful overnighter, winter overnighter. It's about three degrees. It's meant to go down to freezing tonight. I don't think it will where I am because it's fairly dense. It may do, I don't know, but I don't think it will. If so, it's fine. I've got my sleeping bag, sleeping pad. We're good to go. Good to go. Right, let's get this fire stoked up. Finish my coffee. And I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. I think there's an owl out there as well. So, after that coffee, the fire nearly went out. I don't know if you guys can see this in the in the light, but it's, it's peeling apart. It's really punky. <clears throat> but just because it's punky on the outside, doesn't mean so much. As I peel that punky outer layer away, this bit here is absolutely solid. So I reckon if I get my saw to that and cut these into sections, that solid dry core should be enough. Now that the fire's got a bit of a base of hot embers, that solid dry core should be enough to, to burn this wood. The key to, as well, to identifying rotten wood is if your saw eats through it really, really fast, like unusually fast, it's probably rotten to the core as well. But if it's, if it's kind of soft and then it goes really hard and you can feel it's hard inside, that's definitely okay firewood. It might smoke for a bit, but it's definitely okay. That is absolutely, let me show you this. You can see here, I know it's dark, sorry guys, I'll get the light on it in a minute. That, is the, is the punky part, this kind of outer outer area. And I can pick it away and pluck it, and it tends to fall apart. This part, absolutely solid. So that's gonna burn fine, especially now that the fire's going. I'm keeping the sections quite long. Again, I don't know if you can see this, but that is how long I'm going for, because it's, it's, it's getting near winter, and I wanna keep a longer fire going. And just using longer pieces of wood means less soaring. Gets a better bed of embers to last the night. Let's get this on there. Ugh. I'm ripping off any rotten bark as well because that's not going to burn too good. And I put some others around the edge and the sides of it. That way it's going to keep that heat from the fire is going to start to dry out these bits of wood. That's a common thing I tend to do here, especially in the rainy months, is just get all my firewood right close to the fire in the first place to help dry it out. Because otherwise it's just going to smoke and take ages to get going. But that's better. That's better. I'll show you, I might show you my shelter a bit more in the morning, chaps because it's quite dark, it's getting quite dark now. Ah, that's better. But the fire's definitely going. Definitely going. Whoa, nearly down. So that is 
oak, a little bit of pine, small bit of beech, and um, there's plenty of rhododendron bush around where I am. So I just whacked a load of that on. Uh, and that's super, super dry when I, the stuff I found. So that's why this is roaring almost like it's on gas. Cooking on gas. Cooking on gas. So you can see where the fire is. There's the uh, shelter that my bag's now under the shelter. You can just see the top of the tarp there of the plow point. And I'll, I'll run through that tomorrow when it's light so you guys can see what I've done. But I don't need a fire reflector tonight. It's not going to get cold enough. That is one <laughs> decent fire. That's going to burn for a long time. So now I can cook on the edge of it. I'm not going to cook on the top of that. Look at that. See all that smoke that's coming off that punky rotten wood that I put on? In fact, see it coming on? There's the rhododendron here. So that one is the rhododendron, which is really dry. And if you see this one on the edge, smoking away, that was that punky oak, which is still caught on the edges there. But it's really struggling. Can you see that? Hopefully you guys can see that. It's absolutely, like, like a strobe light at the end of that little log there. That's awesome. Look at it flicker and change colour on that little bit there. That's awesome, just flashing black like that. Black then orange. Mesmerising. You're a wizard, Harry. As it's just after Christmas, still got leftover turkey. So, it's a bit white, sorry, but there's loads of turkey there. Uh, where are we going with it? There. Loads of turkey. And I'm going to make a little, I don't know, stew, broth, whatever. In this I've got chopped carrot and onion. And then these stock, they're really nice, just chicken stock, but they, they really help to thicken out a kind of stew. So, in goes onion carrot. And in goes the turkey. Stew in a pot. Stew in a pot. That can go in there. And so hard to open. Oh my days! There we go. They're kind of like jelly. Um, but they smell amazing. I know, I know it's plastic and it's not super bushcrafty, but I'm telling you now, these things are the dogs. I'm gonna, I need to save some, so. And then, I'm not gonna put this directly on the fire, just next to it. Leave a little gap like that. Plonk it like, there. Ooh, that's hot, ow. And then I'll, what I'll do is give it, I don't know, 10 minutes and then I'll twist it round and do the same the other way. It only really needs heating up. Everything can cook pretty slowly. But it's gonna be good, it's gonna be tasty. In fact, what I might do actually is uh, rake some of them coals over this way. I'll do that so it cooks a bit, even, bit more evenly then. Push these coals up against it and that will cook it nice and evenly. Cool. Cooking way good now. So while I'm waiting for the stew, the steward, the, the steward, while I'm waiting for the steward, I am going to light the lantern. Oh, that's hot. Bugger, bugger, bugger. Going to light the lantern? No, I'm not going to light the lantern. Come on. You bugger. Come on, the camera's rolling. Don't do this to me. 
Oh, another twig. Another twig. Let's try. Try again. Will you? Yeah, buddy! Finally! We made it. Food time. Okay. The stew is done. Let me show you, actually. That is some soupy goodness right there. Lovely. It's now cool enough to actually hold. Which is good. I'll put some more logs on the fire. Gonna enjoy this soupy goodness. Piping hot. Oh. Nailed it. Nailed it. Oh man. That's literally one of the simplest recipes you can do. Out in the woods, just cut, cut it, cut it up back at home. Bring it out in the woods and a couple of stock cubes. I'm telling you, those stock cubes make a huge difference. Look at that. <laughs> this is the carrot on your screen. <laughs> oh well. Mmm, that is so good. You can't be a good stew in the winter. Oh, oh that's hot. So I'm gonna uh, hang my lantern. Uh, it's, it's not hot where I touch the bell here, so it should be fine. I'm gonna hang it from the edge of the top. At the top here, there's a loop. Hopefully you can see that. And obviously there's a bale on the lantern itself. All I'm gonna do is tuck that loop underneath the bale and, and keep that hole there. And then just feed a stick through, like so. And that stick acts kind of like a T, T joint sort of thing and it helps to pinch it. So now that just rests there. It's pinched on itself and the lantern can hang and I'll show you it from a distance. So there's the loop with the stick. On the edge of the top, the, the top of the ridge line is just here. It's out of focus there, but yeah, it's not putting too much sag on it because it's a small lantern. And that can just hang now from my top. Kind of acts as like a little reading light or however you want it to be, really. Fire's doing alright. Hissing a bit where I put a bit of wet wood on. But I've got a nice stack here of some big rhododendron, big trees. Look, that's not rhododendron there, but. That stuff is super smooth bark. I'll show you it tomorrow, but it's all around here. All these all these bushes are all rhododendron. These green bushes there. There's setup. There's a backpack, lantern. I'm gonna read a book and just chill for a bit. Write some notes and keep warm by the fire. Okay, so I've got my uh, sleeping bag set up now, and you can see just under there is the inflatable mattress. 
or roll, or yeah, sleeping pad, whatever you want to call it. Lanting's still going strong, and I'm actually getting that was low on paraffin when I put that up, so that's handy. Hello, focus. <laughs> uh, so the ground's slightly sloping that way, so I decided to have my head just up here. Just over here, you can see that's the head of the sleeping bag. I've got my. I do have a little small pillow. It's gonna. It's gonna drop. I don't think it's gonna freeze tonight. But this is. This is. A lot of people will say <coughs> it's not winter till it snows. Um, we don't get much snow. I'm in the south of England. We don't get much snow here. When we do get it, it's usually back end of February, sometimes March lately. But we are a four season country. We have four seasons. We have a temperate climate maritime temperate climate and we are in our winter now this is the start of our winter end of december early january this is our winter so everyone's winter differs around the world some of you guys get minus 30 i don't envy you <laughs> some of you guys get like plus 10 this is celsius by the way so yeah winter winter is here this is winter in the south of england it's colder up in the north of england by I've always found by about five, six degrees colder up there, and then Scotland, maybe eight to seven, eight degrees colder. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this last camp of 2017. What am I on about? 2018. Last camp of 2018. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Been writing in a little notepad. I like to write my notepad just to update my, keep a track of my, a log as such of my trips. I don't obviously feature these much in the YouTube videos, but I do keep a little journal. I think it's good to keep a journal and document your time in the outdoors and your trips, overnighters, whether it's with friends or <coughs> just solo ones. Yeah, it's good to keep it, keep it going, keep those memories going. Obviously, I'm making the video at the same time, but it's always nice to have them down on paper, you know? Get them down on paper, that way if I ever have a son or a daughter or children, they can hopefully read them one day and see the adventures that I've been on maybe go out maybe it'll inspire them to go out there and try out their own adventures that's what it's all about at the end of the day is getting outdoors getting TA outdoors oh dear crazy year 2018 like kind of like highs at quite a lot of highs and lows really um, I mean the channel, this time last year, so January last year, pretty much New Year's last year, I had 200,000 subscribers, YouTube subscribers. Now I've got, at the time of this video, I think around 750,000. <coughs> so that's like 550,000 subscribers in a year. Prior to that, I think I gained 100,000 in that year. So it's crazy, it's absolutely crazy. I don't get how, I'll tell you what, I, don't, I just don't get how, how, I know YouTube has its algorithm and things like that, but I just don't get how it snowballs, how it snowballs like it does. But ever since they've updated the algorithm, and I guess there's so many people uploading onto YouTube daily, it's getting harder and harder to be found out there. So I, it, it's like the bigger channels are getting bigger and the smaller channels are, are struggling to get on the map. And it's like it's getting worse, that gap between the big, big channels and the, the smaller channels. And I always thought the algorithm that they tweaked about a year ago, two years ago, no, maybe three or four years ago, where they tweaked it so that it wasn't the viral video that went to the top. It was the video that had the best watch time. Um, and that, and, and ever, ever since they tweaked that algorithm, I thought that YouTube would um, pick up for the little channels. And it did for some, but now it feels like it's... It squashed them somehow, which is really sad. So, I don't know. I hope it works out a bit more better for those channels in 2019. 2019, eh? In a couple days' time. I'm looking forward to it. I want to do some different things this year. I felt this past year, I had a great year. I mean, I learned how to for I forged... Where's my axe? I forged my own axe. I learnt how to blacksmith and I forged my own hatchet with Alex Steele and a flint striker and my own bushcraft knife which I didn't bring with me but that's something I wanted to learn you know I'm, I'm always keen to learn I think it's where I was an ex-teacher 
I've always got that thirst to learn new skills. I'm not afraid to say that I can't do something because I know it'll be okay and I know that I'll learn it eventually if I put the time and effort into it, uh, you know, the practice, then I will learn it. And anyone can. If you put the time and practice into things, you will learn it. But yeah, like I say, next year I want to change things up a bit and try and... I want to do bigger trips. I want to experience different things. I want to see more of not just my country, but the UK, Great Britain, Europe, Scandinavia, Canada, the US, the world really. But obviously it costs to do those things. And that's why I do the sponsor videos every now and then so that I can pay for those trips and pay for those flights and everything which costs so much these days. But next year I really want to travel around a bit more. I want to do some bigger trips. I've done some five dayers. I want to do like a maybe a seven day trip and, and traveling trips where I have to move and keep on moving. Not just stay in the same area for five days but actually keep moving on and, and getting to a new campsite or something. That's what I want to do more of next year. I want to canoe. I want to, I've done kayaking quite a bit before. I've done canoeing a couple of times but I can see the appeal with bushcraft, camping and canoeing and the ability to, to take more gear and have a bit more of a comfortable trip with a canoe. I say comfortable because obviously but sometimes it can be quite rough, but yeah, I want to be able to canoe more and, act and see different places via a canoe, get to places that aren't usually camped in and do multiple day trips from a canoe. And the great thing about our winter is that our rivers don't freeze over. They, they have done in the past, but they don't really freeze over. Obviously the lakes rarely freeze over as well, the big lakes, so I'd love to, to go and do some winter canoe stuff, so maybe that's on the cards. I know Joe, Joe Robinette, hit a million this year. Joe did really well this year. Congrats, buddy, if you're watching. Cheers to you, mate. For a million, that's a massive achievement. For an outdoor channel, you know, we're, compared to the big channels out there, we're small fry compared to your PewDiePie's and everything like that. Think about it, you've, you've got your beauty channels, you've got your gaming channels, you've got your vloggers. Th these, these are all monster channels, monster, monster channels. We're talking in millions and millions of, multi multiple millions of subscribers. So for Joe to hit that million, how he did, is epic. It really is a massive, massive achievement. And he's, he's sort of set the bar for the outdoor community and I think it's great. He's doing what he's doing, he's inspiring loads of people. He certainly inspired me to go out canoeing and get and get a canoe and do some canoe trips. Um, I love watching his canoe videos, probably the most actually. So yeah, the, the outdoor community is growing really well on YouTube. We're seeing some amazing channels out there doing amazing things. And I really hope that it continues to grow and I hope that this plane moves on anytime soon because it's really annoying me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I really do hope that the outdoor community on YouTube continues to grow. I might even set up another channel um, next year, like a family channel, so I can put some family videos on there because I do a lot of camping trips with my wife and my dog. So, yeah, maybe I'll put some uh, put some things on that. I think that'd be good. Oh. <coughs> It's good to finally lie down properly. Stiff neck. Good night to you beautiful people. See you in the morning. morning everyone. It's now 8 o'clock exactly in the morning. The fire still has some smoke to it which is nice. I reckon I could get this going again <clears throat> without too much effort. I, I didn't have a great sleep actually. I had a bit of a headache in the night. Um, I think the issue was I was a bit dehydrated and I drank a lot of my water whilst doing the soaring and also use that water in the stew as well, some of that. I know that really, that hydrates you anyway, but because it's hot, it tends to make you thirsty, so 
yeah, I could have done with a bit more water, and that gave me a headache, which kept me up at night. But I should be all right this morning. So there's a bit of rhododendron here. I'm pretty sure it is rhododendron. I'm not sure actually. Feels like it. Uh, it's sticking up off the ground, just the way it's all windy and twisty, like it grows. It doesn't grow too high, really. It's more of a, a bush and a shrub. Uh, <clears throat> but this bit is completely dry. You can see that. So this whole bit that's been left off the ground like that is completely dry. So I'm going to saw it about here, uh, split it down, and maybe make some feather sticks from it, probably, uh, just to, because it's so dry in that in a piece. So I just need to split this bit, really. It's quite a straight piece as well, which is nice. So dry. So dry. See if I can split this down. It's already got some kind of cracks in it. So if I can split this down a bit more, feather stick it up, and hopefully get the fire going while the heat's still there. Wow, look at that. Look at the interior of that. I'm guessing that's rotten, that piece. Feels pretty damp. So if I split it again about there. That didn't work so well. But it is chopping away the rot. Twisty. Pretty twisty. There we go. That's the sort of nasty bit. If I can split this again, it's a bit of a curved grain, I need to saw it. Sort of there. Never feather sticks with a rhododendron before. Let's give it a go. Lovely smooth wood. Rhododendron curls. It's nice actually. It's, it's, I prefer it to pine. It's so smooth. This part here is like it's been polished. Like sanded smooth very dry so I would think this would take a <coughs> feather a spark from a ferro rub pretty easily. Feather stick hack for you guys. Um 
So a lot of the time you'll see people place this on the ground, if I can show you. Oh, well, place that on the ground, lay a ferro rod like that and start shooting sparks into it. But what you can do is actually pin your ferro rod against it, like that. Lock it with your thumb up here, and then you've got way more control to try and light these feather sticks. Almost. Whoops. We were very close then, we almost had a flame. You have to really shower sparks in it. Heats it up as well. Almost. Go on, go on, go on. There we go. Tilt it upwards. Get those curls burnt, get another stick in there as well. Try and get those lit. Place it down. Don't know where I put my twigs. I'm just holding the twigs there at the moment just to get some heat through them. Don't want to extinguish it. So that was fun. Just got the fire going. Started it. Went to check my bag to get the food out. Breakfast, which is basically just bacon really. And it wasn't in there. Neither was my other lens, which I forgot. So basically, I know where I've left it, on the side at home. So I've got no breakfast, I've run out of water. So I thought, well, there wasn't much point in getting a fire going if I've got no food or water. So it's pack up time, unfortunately. It was very silly of me, very silly, Michael. But these things happen, and I need to pack this gear up anyway. Uh, it's only a short overnighter. Yeah, sorry about that, guys, I apologize completely forgetting my, my food like that. Luckily I wasn't in the wilderness. <laughs> I'm just in a local woodland here. But <clears throat> yeah, let's get this gear packed away. So this was a little tip uh, my buddy Paul, Paul Kirtley told me. Um, not how to hank the cord up like that. That's just something I've known for a while. This is an adjustable guy line hitch or tarp, tarp, tarp hitch. You can see I can just adjust it like that. Not a torque top hitch, sorry, guy line hitch. And uh, yeah, it's adjustable, sliding knot, stays pretty tight like that. But Paul was saying, when I was with Paul, <clears throat> a lot of the time this would just dangle down and get in the way. And he just showed me a simple thing of just opening up a fork in the cord there that's tied around the tree, sliding this back towards the knot, and it pinches out, pinches in, sorry, and doesn't go anywhere. Dead handy tip, very. It's a very small and easy tip, but actually it makes a massive difference and it stops this just crumbling and falling everywhere. So yeah, dead easy tip. Cheers for that, Paul. This is my tarp set up. I had a small ground sheet tarp. It folds. I just fold it up and roll.
I just tucked under the front of the backpack by the axe. Pinch that in. So this, this tarp is adjustable, I can adjust it up the top here, like I showed earlier. And also at the bottom here. So I can put it loose. Like that. Or I can pull this knot. And it goes nice and tight. It's all quick release as well, so I just pull this. That's then released. Two times through there. And there we go. That's ready to rumble. Right, well that's it. Apologies guys that I didn't get any breakfast. I'm probably feeling more sad about it than you guys. But it's been a good fun trip. Nice short overnight in the woods. Uh, next video, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next video. It'll either be kind of more of a natural shelter type one or perhaps another quick overnighter. I've got quite a few bigger trips planned this year. Uh, certainly in spring and autumn. I've got a really good trip in autumn. So, yeah, it's getting booked up. It's getting busy. Getting busy. It's about 20 past nine now. So I'm going to head on home. I hope you guys had a great Christmas. I hope you have a great new year. I will see you in 2019.